Okay, hi, I'm Benjamin Murphy, and uh, we're here at my show, Lavish Entropy, with Delphine Gallery in Marylebone. Ben, can you tell me something, well, you're standing in the gallery, um, can you tell me something about the work that you've produced for this show? Yeah, um, the show was kind of an afterthought, really. Um, so I intended to take a bit of time off from doing tape drawing, because I was writing a play, and the way I wrote the play was I read maybe 200 books or something, and... Um, all works of classic literature, which I then kind of harvested single sentences from, and then I stitched all those sentences together to make one linear narrative. So the plan was to take some time off from doing the tape drawings to do that, but then just out of compulsion, because I can't help it, I just ended up doing all the drawings anyway. So I didn't really think of them as a series, but then once they were all done, and they were done over quite a a vast um, space of time, once they were all done, it kind of realised that it was a series because they were all inspired by the things I was reading for the play. So the play is what kind of ties them all together. Um, and so I'm exhibiting a single page from my first draft um, of that in the show as well. And that single page is, is here, right? It is, is, yeah. is this the page that you've, you've got? So this, this is actually part of the, um, the play of which... Uh, the show is inspired. Yeah, so the play was um, intended to be read only, really, anyway. So um, I think displaying it in a visual way like that, I think, kind of works for the kind of play that it is. And you were saying, you know, the, the actual play and um, the narrative, it's made up from, you know, already existing yeah. pieces of literature that you've knitted together and you've, you, you might have created an own, your own story out of that? Yeah, that? so the story kind of happened organically from the um, sentences that I was collecting. And um, when I first... So I had the idea, and when I first sat down to actually start tying some together, I had no idea the way it was going to turn out, the direction it was going to take, or what the story would be. Um, but I got one single page done, and then, and then the whole thing was pretty much based on that. So the first page I did the whole thing came together almost and I knew what I was going to be doing for the rest of it. And you just kept, kept going, kept going. And, and is, this, is this because of uh, you know, an inherent love of literature? So you're an avid reader yourself? Have you? Yeah, so um, I read a lot anyway and I found myself just collecting these sense the, the walls are a bit wet some places. <laughs> um, I'll start again. Yeah, so I read a lot naturally and I've always found myself highlighting and saving sentences that I liked for no real reason and um, I'm not actually really sure when, when or where I came up with the idea of stitching these all together and trying to make one coherent story out of them um, but yeah I was collecting them before I even had the idea to do that wow. and, the, and the images then they're based on the um, story that has emerged is that right? Uh, no so they're, they're more um, the pieces in the show are inspired by the works I was reading. So they're kind of, in, in the same way that I've kind of reinterpreted existing sentences to create the play, I also kind of reinterpret things I read when I create the artworks. But the, the link to the literature and the artworks is very vague and it's almost, I'm almost not sure what it is. So I'm not, I'm, essentially I'm, the works are inspired by certain works of literature, but not in a not in a um, specific or direct way. It's more that um, whatever I'm reading at the time kind of filters its way into my work, but it's not. I don't draw certain scenes from books or certain yeah, so characters. You, or so you wouldn't go into one particular image and say that is from this particular no, book. No, that's not the way it works. No. Okay. And and the bigger works take about as long as it takes me to read a book. So. Um, so that's the kind of mindset I'm in when I'm making it. Okay. And I do kind of have in the back of my mind that this is what I'm reading, so this is what this will... It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, I know that the works are going to be inspired by the literature, so I hold that in my mind, and then that, I suppose, influences me to create certain things and certain imagery, so... So, uh, looking at the, the, the pieces, I mean, obviously we've seen a number of your works, your shows over the years, but this is... Is there's an extra layer of detail added to, to some of these. Um, yeah. To these. I mean, um, I've noticed this one, the, the one that you're behind you, multiple layers on glass. Um, so still using the tape, is it? Yeah, but, so they're um, all, it's all black electrical tape on glass, but um, 
for, for this new series, I've done um, a few like 3D ones. So it's I've drawn with the black electrical tape on the glass, then set the whole thing in a clear resin. And then I usually flip that glass around and frame it. But for these, I've um, when I flip the glass around, I've, I've painted within the boundaries of anything that I want to be opaque. Um, and then I framed them all within one frame with like a one centimeter gap in between each. Hmm. To give the, there's a kind of nice parallax shift when you move around them, where you can see behind certain behind things and yes, I think you can see it. On, perspective on well. changes. So how many layers on the, on something like this is it? Is so it this one's three. Three layers. Yeah. Um, three is the most I've gone up to. Yeah. At the moment. Um, I mean, I suppose one day I'll do more, but this three is made the the amount I can fit in a in a standard depth frame. Mm -hmm. Any any more, I'd have to get a a fatter frame, and it might start to look odd the fatter I go. So something like this piece there, um, and and recognizing what we're just talking about in terms of your yeah. working style, do you remember the thought process that was going through your mind when you're creating something something like this, which is different from what I've seen in yeah. terms of your um, work? I. I don't, to be honest, but I um, I kind of zone out when I'm doing them, so I don't really think about anything in particular. I just kind of let them let them come as they do. Um, so I mean, I understand that as well as you do, to be honest. But um, this show, well, the play is largely inspired by the works of Marcel Proust, who is one of my favourite writers, and um, the show opens on Tuesday, the 10th of July, which would which would have been his birthday. So the whole show is loosely inspired by him just because he's probably the author that I read most. But so this piece um, has a portrait of him in the top right corner. I see. Um, yes, yeah, so there's lots of little tiny hidden you know, gems. Yeah, a lot, a lot of the work, at least, at least three of the work, or two of the works in the show are named after characters in um, Proust literature. Okay, which ones are they? Um, both are light boxes. These are these. The, oh, right, these. Yeah, these ones over here. Should we have a look at some of the other art then? Should yeah, we, should we go over here and see what, um, what we've got? So again, this 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 multi layered effect. You know, you got the um, you know these you know the the still life. Yeah. Um, which is lovely. And then uh, you know another the still life one's got quite a good name. It's called transitory death, which are both atonyms for still and life. Very good. You say, yeah, I like that. It's the only insight I can give you into that particular piece. Uh, and then just over here, um, sort of the, the black electrical tape on glass, probably more what we traditionally yeah, associate your work with. Yeah, that's more of a typical Benjamin Murphy piece, I suppose. Yeah. Um, although, so I've recently started hand carving the frames as well. So mm -hmm. this one's um, the first, car first frame I've ever carved. I think it gives it a really nice effect. I've painted black back into the, the carving coming so it's like a bit of a soul effect but yeah look at that. it's not the greatest of light there for the mm. and then just over here um some some, some more some more works but uh, we can't talk, go through them all but over here this is um you so know, the, different types of, this is um thread yeah so this is just um just black thread and a needle and just stitched by hand and uh I did them for a works on paper show at Beers Gallery originally, um, but I did them whilst I was staying in a cabin. Well, I did one of them and started the other one whilst I was staying in a cabin on a lake in Finland that had no running water. It was just like real kind of return to the earth kind of place. Um, and I hated doing them. I've done three in total and I don't plan on doing any more anytime soon. It was just, it's a completely different process. It's just, yeah, it, it, yeah, but. Um so you find it challenging in, in a different yeah, way? Yeah, in, in, in physically even, because to do a tape drawing or to do any other kind of, you're kind of moving your arms a lot, and um, with these, I was just sat at a desk with my arms like that for eight hours a day. And I mean, if you try that for five minutes, it starts to hurt. Yeah. I've got, like, I've still got neck problems. Like, my, my necks are still super tense. Well, just from creating these ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really like the effect. But, um, yeah, it's a different effect, isn't it? And yeah, I also like, though, how the line is not quite fluid. It's, it's made up of a lot of straight lines, which um, is a similar way to the way in which I make lines with tape. Yeah. And I do woodcuts, and you get a similar kind of line with those. So I, I think they connect 
quite nicely with the tape drawing. Yeah, so. but yeah. It's, yeah, it's a completely different thing. It's funny about how you say that the physical process of, of doing mm. something like this, but but you, you know the t- the cutting of the tape that's a that's a physical process as well, isn't it? Yeah, although with the so with um, so I use three different knives when I'm cutting with the tape. So I use like a snappable craft knife, and that to do a curve with that you have to move your whole arm, and then and then I use. Um, a scalpel with a cylindrical blade so you can kind of you can do curves by moving your hand and then I also have one that's um, cylindrical handle but then the blade can move freely 360 degrees so I can use I can draw just using my fingers so um, that's how I've been able to get like so much more detail in the newer works than the earlier works. Do you remember the first time you decided to start using tape in your artwork? I do yeah it was um it wasn't even my idea. It was, uh, I was, um, it was when I was doing my MA. I was on a night out. We went back to my friend's house after um, after being out in a few bars. We were back, all a little bit half cut, and um, he started drawing on his wall with this roll of electrical tape, and then I started doing it, and then and then I just kind of did a few more and didn't really think anything of it. And, um, and then when I moved to London, I ended up putting one in a show and doing a nine-story high one on a building that got loads of press. And then from that, people just kind of expected it of me. And, and so I started actually trying to push it as a medium. And um, I kind of fell in love with it. But it was never an intentional thing. It was, it was, it was an accident, really. So that, that, I remember that nine-story high um, piece on one of the old yeah. car parks in, um, in Shoreditch. Sure, how did sure. that come about then? And how did you just... Well, so that was for, um, that was Francis Lade International. I gave a, donated a piece to a show they had. And that was my first ever exhibition outside of uni. Um, and it was an incredible show. And, um, and um, they also said, we want to get some press without any budget. Do you have any idea for something big? And I took that very literally. I was like, well, let's just do something actually big then. And um, I'd, see, I'd been eyeing up this NCP window for a while, so I just suggested it to them, and they had a lot of meetings, circumnavigated a lot of red tape, and eventually got to the point where I was allowed to do it. Wow. It's for your first sort of street piece in that story high. Yeah. That's quite ambitious. And for my first ever exhibition. And, um, and that kind of kicked it all off, really, because that got a lot of press. It was in like, the Guardian and the Independent and stuff. And it was essentially for my first ever show, so it really helped me out, I think, um, and got me to where I am today, I suppose. And how would you say, you, you know, from, from that moment when you first started to this moment here, how do you say your work's evolved throughout um, that time? I'm just, I suppose I'm just going as heavy on the detail as I can. Um, and with, with tape being such an unusual medium, there's no books being written about how to draw with tape like there is with how to paint with oils or whatever. So naturally, when I first started, my lines were a bit clunky. The the level of detail I could get was quite um, it's not very refined. So I suppose just through experience with the medium and just pushing myself and trying out new stuff, I've eventually found new ways of doing things. And uh, so I suppose it's just progression. The work's just progressed. Progression and experimentation, because there's a lot of experimentation in this show, yeah. for example. Yeah, and. Uh, Yes, I've done some um, light boxes, some 3D pieces, some stitch pieces, some ceramics. Uh, Yeah, so I suppose I'm branching out a little bit. Ben, thanks very much for talking to me. Thank you. On the hottest day of the year. (laughs) I know. (laughs) It's roasting. (laughs) Oh, dear.